Tam Higher Education, one of the main ranking in the world that we always use to, to see the benchmark of universities all around the world. This year, they are in the midst of uh, changing things for, for that ranking. So if we can go straight to Phil Batty, the deputy editor of Time Higher Education, so maybe he can share with us more on this. Hello, Phil. Hi there, hi. Thank hi, you hi, hello. Um, I would just quickly like to get your opinions on, on the, what are the changes actually were being done to the Time Higher Education uh, ranking this time around. Well, we've made some uh, some very serious changes. We've listened to the criticisms that were made of our old system. We've mm -hmm. been publishing a ranking between 2004 and 2009, but there was some fairly serious criticism that the rankings weren't sophisticated enough, they weren't robust enough. So we changed our data supplier. We're no longer working with a company called QS. Oh, we're getting all our data from a, a company called Thomson Reuters. They're, they're research specialists, and we've, we've made some dramatic changes to improve the sophistication of the tables. Mm -hmm. um, the main thing is that we're looking to um, have a much greater weighting for teaching measures. We understand that universities are broad uh, institutions, they do lots of different things, and we're looking to, to measure teaching in a much better way than we have done in the past. Mm -hmm. you, you know about Shanghai Geotown's ranking, right? So, yes. so what do you think are the main criteria that differentiate PhE's ranking and Shanghai Geotown's? The Shanghai Xiaotong has got a very respected ranking, um, but it is very narrow. It's um, produced by academics, and it's really an exercise, I think, of more interest to academics. It's, um, it really only looks at a university's research performance using citations. It looks very narrowly at research, mm -hmm. and in particular scientific research, rather than uh, research in the arts and humanities and social sciences. So. It's a very academic exercise, and our tables are supposed to appeal to both academics and university managers who need to benchmark themselves globally, but also to be a, a very helpful tool to uh, undergraduate and postgraduate students. So we look at a, a wider range of university activities. Mm. Do you think with the changes this year, you perceive uh, there's going to be uh, a lot of surprises in, 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 in the results? Yes, we've, um, we've reduced the weighting that, w that we used to give under the old system to reputation. Um, we feel that um, although rep while reputation is a, is, a, is a helpful measure, we think it was given too great a weighting under the old QS system. So we're reducing the dependence on these subjective measures like reputation. Mm -hmm. We've improved the reputation survey we carry out, but we'll also be uh, giving it less significance. So, a lot of institutions with a big name, but without perhaps the performance to match, will find themselves um, taking a hit with these new tables, which we, we're going to publish very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people seem to think now in the very competitive world of global higher education industry that rankings play a very, very important role in persuading people, in, in making their choices. Uh, have you, you know, how do you look at this? Because I'm sure there have been feedbacks to this effect, even to your organization. Yes, I think there's a clear sense now that the rankings have become extremely influential. Um, we've seen since we published them over the last six years that um, they've started to be used as a student consumer tool, but they're also being built into legislation in some countries. We've seen them used as part of immigration law, as part of a system of awarding scholarships. Um, they've become extraordinarily influential, you know, building into uh, government policy. So it's actually they've become so important um, to the global higher education sector that's why we felt we needed to make them more rigorous and more transparent to help the sector mm -hmm. use them better and get, get more from them. Phil, I, I don't have a lot of time tonight. Thank you so much for all that you've said. Uh, but we'll cross to you again you're closer to the time that you're going to announce the results for this year. Thank you so much, Phil. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Um, Associate, Associate Professor Richard Holmes, what are your views on the changes that he mentioned for this year? Okay, um, well, we still don't know exactly mm -hmm. what sort of changes are going to be made, and there's quite a few details that you know, we still don't know. Mm -hmm. In general, I would say that the new THE ranking is going to be a step forward. They're reducing the reliance on rather dubious, subjective element that's the mm -hmm. academic review and the employer review um, and they're probably going to reduce the uh, weighting given to 
international students um, and Composition international faculty. Yeah. There's been a lot of um, stories in Times Higher Education and other newspapers and magazines and journals about how um, the number of international students is probably having a negative effect rather than a positive effect and it should be considered as a, an indicator of quality. Okay, that's good. Um, they're putting a lot of, apparently going to put a lot of weight on um, citations, mm -hmm. which is good, but maybe they might be putting a bit too much. Um, mm -hmm. And they're also including data on things like uh, research income, uh, total institutional income, which I think gives us a bit of information that we need, which other rankings previously didn't. So we we mm -hmm. still got um There's a lot of things which need to be need to be decided, but I think the, th the new THE ranking is going to be something of an improvement over the okay. old before old before one, yeah. we end yes, for tonight so, yeah. like the rankings or not yes they are here and, and a lot of people case, yes. been influenced yeah. by them and uh, you know what are your views on that because even in Malaysia some policies have been influenced by the results of this ranking. yeah well it's inevitable uh, you can't get away from it I think that everybody concerned needs to be a little bit careful and not just look at the overall rankings but at the different sections of the rankings. Mm -hmm. For example, if you look at the Shanghai rankings and you ignore the Nobel Prize winners, Oxford and Cambridge and Imperial College London don't do nearly so well. So I, I would say don't just look at rankings but go, take them go apart. Micro and, yeah. yes. Look what's best for you. Yes. Take it from there. Uh, we'll yes. talk more when we have the time higher education okay. out. It's not only THEQS, it's been changed yes. now for this year.